have said so far, we have said that a new year is a gift from God. This gift is a gift that God gives to all of us. But just because it's a new year, if you operate a new year, which is a new gift from God, the old way, you may not experience the best from it. Just because it's a new year doesn't mean that things are going to change in your life. Things will only change in your life if you are making changes that are good in a new year. And here at Hillview Church, we want to encourage every partner to become you. New ways of thinking, new attitude, new habits, new ways of doing things. Because a new year needs a new you to give you a better result. Come and say a new year. New, year. new, me. new me. The combination of a new, brand new year and a brand new way of thinking and a brand new way of working and a brand new habit changes a lot of things for you. So we want to encourage you don't just celebrate the year. Make changes that are aligned to the year. And what we have said so far, which is our subject this morning, we are looking at a theme called 6 plus 9. 6 plus 9 equals? 6 plus 9 equals? Here is what we have said. God began to impress with, within my heart some a year ago about why I need to plan for the 15 years of my life. I'm 46 years now, I was 45 then, and I struggled with the Lord regarding planning for 15 years. I'm used to around five years or so. So, yeah, so I couldn't get it, and it took me a long time. This is why I'm a year later. I am now talking to you, and you are benefiting from the dialogue that I had with God regarding this subject. But as the time progresses, I saw something in Scripture that changed my thinking that there are certain categories of our lives that God blesses. God can bless the works of your hand, which majority of us like, but the problem with that blessing is that when God blesses the works of your hands, the beneficiaries of the works of your hands are your employer. And then God can also bless your life. The disadvantages of blessings that are located within your life is that they only reside within you when your life ends, they end with you. And then God can also bless your livestock, he can bless your garden, he can bless your, yeah, the things that you do with your hand. The disadvantage with that is those blessings are only located within what you do. And when those things cease to be, that's your end. And then I recognize in the study of, this, of the scripture as a scholar of the Bible, that there is a very intensive progression in the theme of planning. That God is a planner, and as a planner, his highest blessing resides in plans. An advantage of planning is that when you have plans, the blessing that resides on your plans do not end with your life. They can go beyond your life. They can live longer. This is why God, the greatest plan of all the time, planned a long time ago, and we are still in his plan. He planned over 2,000. He even took made some risk assessment that in case Adam fails, Jesus would come, and if Jesus comes and they kill him, would take the blood, and the blood will cleanse others, and this would be, and this planning was well documented. So I then learned and came to the conclusion that anyone who wishes to become successful, according to the biblical format, needs to have a plan. A plan. A plan. And here's how we have defined the plan so that we bring those of you who are here for the first time into alignment. A plan is a documented strategy of how things ought to be done. I'm going to repeat that. A plan is a documented strategy of how things ought to be done. Majority of us, normally when we think we are planning, we refer to our ideas that reside in our mind as the plan. It is not a plan until it has been translated into a document. Do you know why you are saved? Do you know why you are in church today? Do you know why you love God today? Here's one answer. You have read his plan. You have read the plan of God about your life. So he had a plan, and if God could have kept his plan for our lives, in his mind, none of us would be here. 
because we would not know about it. So a plan is ideas that are translated into a document. There's a process in psychology called cementation of how the brain, this is why students write, because in the progression of writing, the brain then cement thoughts and they are easier to remember. So if you want to become successful this morning, we are saying you need a plan for the next 15 years, and we are planning for six plus nine, which means we plan for the first six years of our lives, and we are planning for six areas of our lives. So that you have something that we are believing God for. Here's the truth about 2024. Psalms chapter number 65, verse number 11 says, the Lord crowns the year with what? His goodness and with abundance. Actually, it says his pathway, the drips abundance. And I've explained the process of creation of a year that the days get packaged and God comes and looks at these days and say, Psh, his goodness into it, and then say, Psh, abundance into it. So that every year comes loaded with the goodness of God. Every year comes loaded with the abundance of God. Here's the next question. Do you have a plan of how you are going to take the goodness of God in the year 2024? Do you have a plan of how you are going to take resources and opportunities and abundance that God has embedded within 2024? Black people, to be very specific, one of our things that is limiting a lot of us is we don't plan. We like life that things that fall into our lap, things that and we, we get excited. Actually, we think it is divinity when things suddenly... Psh, we like spontaneity. We like things that happens and say, it just happened. But we like it when it is good. When it is bad, it's the devil. So God wants you to have a plan. Let's start with it in Proverbs, chapter number 19, not 19, chapter number 16. And I want to show you so that you, you, you follow slightly to where we want to go this morning. Proverbs chapter number 16, let's start it from verse number 9. It says, a man's heart plans his way. Look at me, look at me, look at me. A man's heart plans his way or plans his destination. Here's what it means. I am a man. I plan that I want to go to that door. See that door? Another man plans that he wants to go at the end of this stage. Another man doesn't plan. I've taught you about parallelism, that the book of Proverbs is written on parallelism. So it means when you read the book of Proverbs, you are seeing what God does and what man does. So the man does what? Plans. You can show that scripture on the screen. So the man does what? Plans. He plans his destination. I want to go there. Let's read the second part of the scripture, Proverbs 16, verse number 9. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Here's what it means. The man who had planned to go to the door, the Lord will begin to say, this is how you go to the door. Take the step, take the step, take the step. And when he gets here, now he begins to learn on how to walk on air. And the Lord says, no, this is how you walk on air. Go down, whatever. And then another man planned to stop here. And then another man, which is, who is not here, plans nothing. And the Lord visit this man and say, my duty as God is to direct your steps. Do you have a plan? Uh, and the man has no plan. That's the tragedy of majority of us. That we do not have a plan that God can direct it to. Here's what majority of us think. And majority of us who are black, and majority of us who are slightly more retrograde, whatever, let me, let me be nice is we are waiting on God to give us the destination. And God says, you plan your way. Plan your course. And I will determine how you need to take steps. Do you have a course you want to take in 2024? That the Lord should help you to take. So most of the time we come to God and we ask God what we should do. That's why the majority of us are still praying for the year. Lord, I pray that 2024 should be mine. And the Lord said, I've given it to you. It's yours. 
Lord, I pray that 2024 should be good to me. Lord says, I fill this year with goodness. It's yours. Do you have a plan of how to get it? So the Lord wants you to have a plan. What is a plan? A documented strategy of how things are done. Not ideas in the head. This is why other nations are better than us. This is why other races are better than us. They can have a plan for 100 years. Companies can run for centuries because there is a documented strategy and the Lord always finds something that can lead them somewhere. And sometimes your wife doesn't know your plan. Baby, where are we going? Trust me, my baby. <laughs> where are we going? The children ask, Daddy, where are we going? Oh, we are believing God for greater things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do we have a plan? Daddy, can I read something of how you want us to be and where you want us to go? That when you are absent, I can take it and implement it. That the Lord can bless and I can have clarity of how I can align with your plan. I can show you more if I go to my key text. Of today. Look at Proverbs chapter number 3. I mean 16 verse number 3. It says, commit thy works. Look at me. Thy works. What you do with your hands to the Lord. So what you do with your hands, what do you do? You commit it to the Lord. Look at the second part. And he will establish your plans. So here's what the implication of the Hebrew word used here. The Lord looks at your plans and says, okay, this is the plan that he wants to achieve. Psh, 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 psh. He establishes it. Nothing moves it. And then he says, whatever you do in achievement of this, I am going to do what? To bless you so that you are there. If you don't have the plans, you are only surviving on the blessing that comes upon your life. And it is not futuristic. It ends with you. Let me show you one last scripture. Uh, from Proverbs, because I'm just trying to, because I know you come from, okay, let's respect you. Let's not talk about where you come from. Proverbs chapter number 21, verse number 5. I want to show you something, because majority of you don't understand. The difference between the rich people and the poor people lies in one thing, plenty. Look at that scripture. Oh, no, it's not the scripture. Let me read it in my version. The plans of the diligent lead to profit. But the one who is hasty only ends in poverty. Here's the difference between people who end up poor and people who end up rich. Plans. The other guy who ends up rich plans for wealth, plans for profit. In the year 2024, seated here, do you have a plan? of how you're going to make profit. Majority of you are praying, Lord, I want money. And God says, money is with me. Do you have a plan how you're going to make it so that I can add to profit you? So what makes the rich rich is what? Their plans. Their plans. What makes the poor poor, and it's very interesting that it's haste. Now, haste is a response to an opportunity that is not calculated. Oh, they want me to submit today. Can you give me this? Oh, no, there's an opportunity there. No, guys, please, let's add. Let's seize it. It's haste. You don't calculate risk. Better people, rich people, progressive people, they plan. And when they plan, here's what they're conscious about. Profit. How does it make me better? Do you have a plan? Because if you don't have a plan of how you're going to make money this year. Breakthrough. <laughs> Breakthrough is coming. <laughs> can, can you imagine, Pastor Ben, we have a church where we have 100 people who have planned for their lives to make profit. Imagine how you change your scope. Can you imagine we have families that have documented strategies of how they are going to live their life in the next six years and what they want to become, what they want to achieve. It's a different life. But majority of us, life happens to us and we respond. 
God's plan is that you take control of your life through plenty and he leads you based on your plan so that he can give you the desires of your heart. But without a plan, you can't go anywhere. Six plus nine means that as Hillview partners, we need to have a 15-year plan. And I think for those of you, I want to design a template that I would want all of you to be able to use it because I think as a church, our duty is to make you better. So I want to develop a template. If you know something around software engineering or so, maybe you can also help us. I have some idea uh, that can help us so that we help you to plan to make your life better. Otherwise, you're always going to be rotating. Is that rotating? Moving in cycles. Yeah, completing the year. <laughs> so God wants us to have plans because he has blessings that are reserved for plans. And his greatest blessings are in the plan. When God says, I know the plans that I have for you. And, and here's a biblical format for thinking about plans. Is that a good plan should answer very important questions. Three important questions. What? How? When? Say it with me. What? How? When? Say it louder. What? How? When? So when we say it's a documented strategy, that documented strategy should say, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to get it done. This is when I want to do it. Majority of us are stuck at a lower level of plenty, which is mentioning the object of our pursuit. What? Strategic management or strategic planning as a concept today in science, it's different various methods of applying yourself to acquire and implement your desires. So it, it answers at its highest level. A strategic plan answers how we are going to where we want to go. It answers the question how. Do you have a plan of how you want to lead your family? How you want to make money? How you want to transform your uh, whatsoever boy in you? To the guy who should go to the bottoms of the world. Do you have a plan? So God wants us to live our lives with what? A plan. Because God himself is a big planner. Things that doesn't just happen in God's kingdom. He plans. And this week we are praying. Prayer at its highest level should not be trying to cause God to do. Should be asking God to align you to what he has already prepared. And what has he prepared? It is goodness in your year. It is abundance in your year. We should be praying instead of saying, Lord, make the year good. We should be saying, Lord, lead me to goodness in this year. This is a biblical prayer. This is why uh, David of old says he would lead you. He's the shepherd who goes before you and he leads you to still waters. He leads you to pastures. Good prayer, biblical prayer, is not, Lord, do it for me. It's, Lord, show me where you are. Show me where I need to step. Show me how I need to go. But we are obsessed. Obsessed with moving the hand of God. I'm moving the hand of God. Oh, I'm playing. And some of you have been doing this for donkey years. May the Lord lead you into a place of change in your thinking, to align with scripture, and to believe God for what he's doing. The Holy Spirit in you would lead you to the things that God wants you to do and to become. So let's start today with the first area of our planning. It's called soul wealth. So we're planning for six areas of our lives in the next six years, and I'll give you a template if I can. If I can, we're left here. Yeah, if I can, so that you are able to do that. So the first area that we need to plan for is called what? Soul wealth. Well, go to Genesis if you can. Genesis chapter number 2, uh, verse number 7. Uh, Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 7. And the Lord God formed man out of dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The man became a living soul. Look at me. Who are you? The first thing that you are from God's creation is called a living soul. 
This living soul is a product of progressive work of God. In its construction and composition, it was made to become. There's a very strong word here in the Hebrew thinking that represents the process of becoming and how God had to bring three structures to make a being he calls a living soul. It was that this living soul should have the ability to become different things in its existence of living. Soul wealth deals with your ability to plan for self. Remember where the wealth comes from is that the wealth is already located in every packaged year. And wealth is a product of what? Goodness and abundance located in a year. So God, when he was planning, and the scripture is very clear when you go to what he assigns Adam to do to work. The Hebrew thinking is that he was to work out the garden to make it become what he wants it to be. So one of the elements of soul wealth is all of us in our planning should plan for how we want our overall being to become. Here's my first question to you this morning. What are the four things that you want to become? We should all grow. We should all become better. We should all attain status and transition and transformation so that we are no longer what we used to be. And there is no any other better growth than the transformation of your soul to become a different thing. That you are born in the manjas or born in the river or born wherever. But you are able to transform yourself through planning and trusting God's way to become something you have never been. Some of us are stuck in our 12 old dreams. One of the deceptions of our science and education is to teach you three or four things to become. Be a student, be a professional, be a mother, be a father, be diseased, something like that. <laughs> but life is multicolored. It's a rainbow. It's an expression of the soul that we have in us. That majority of us can become more but if you don't have the plan to become more, nothing would ever come out of you. You'll die ordinary, live ordinary, never see the facets of your life that you have never explored. God wants you to have a plan of becoming. Becoming something more precious, becoming something more better. We need, in the progression of our growth, become a different version of ourselves. Don't love yourself and fall in love with so much with yourself that you are captured in the cage of the formation of your youth. God wants you to transform, to become different things. And I know one of the other problems with our nation is also labeling. This is why I love my work of pastoring. I think I'm changing the tone towards it. You know I don't like it so much. Uh, but I'm beginning to like what I do. That's what it means. But, but I also don't want to be limited to the scope of operating as a pastor alone. Because people have a tendency of labeling people. You are a teacher, get stuck there. But there's something else you can offer. You are a doctor, get stuck there. But there's something you can offer. You are an engineer, get stuck there. But there's more that God has put in us. You can be more than just a wife. You can be more than just a husband. You can do more. And how do you become more? First, have the plan of aspirations that are located within your soul that you want to express. And some of you, it may be a transition from bad or bad husband to mild husband so that by the sixth year you are a good husband now. Okay, let's talk about the wife. Yeah, transfer from be a bad woman. You know a bad woman. Yeah. So in the morning service, I told them, none of us like to be told, you know, there are many bad people in the world. And no one wants us to discuss the bad aspects of ourselves. I think one of the greatest places of growing is being able to identify. God has created us good, but there's evil that is fighting us. And unless, and that leads me to the second question, 
all of us who want to grow soul wealth, you need to be able to plan for what to overcome. Because all of us, life is going to put us into a corner where we need to overcome certain things. And the problem is this is an area with no plan. Guess what happens at your workplace? They always tell you, let's do your needs assessment. Let's look at your weakness. Plan on how you can overcome this. But at a personal life, none of us want to deal with the garbage that always follows you every year. And it keeps us in one place. Here's how your soul plan should be. These are things that I need to overcome. Identify them. Know them. One of the, 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 the characteristics of the life that we live because of the devil is that the devil will always attack us in our area of weakness. Temptations do not come where you are strong. When, when I reach person, when the devil attacks you, okay, no, the, let's put it in the context so that you can, when thieves attack you and then they steal your iPhone uh, 15 plus, whatever, I don't know how they are called, and they steal it. And then the following day you are able to say, this thieves, Ish, I can't live without my phone. And you have money to go and buy that phone. That temptation is waste of resources over the devil. Because you have not cried. You had resources to deal with it. But if another person is in the same situation and he cannot replace that for the next 12 months, his money Blaming God and all other things and all the economy and how things. Because that was the area of vulnerability because he didn't have resources to deal with that. It's the same thing whether you talk health. The devil cannot attack you in your area of health if he knows you are strong. He's looking for the area of your weakness. That's why in your soul planning, identify things that makes you vulnerable and plan to overcome them. I talk too much. I need to change. My husband is not, or my wife is not happy with this, or my pastor is not happy with this. Can I learn how to control my time? Okay, I'm lazy. How am I going to, have to overcome laziness? I woke up at seven every day. How am I going to overcome it? What are the elements in your life that you need to overcome? Soul planning means you are able to deal with yourself. And sometimes it's not about what people say. It's about you dealing with yourself. I shared with the morning service how for the past two years, one of my, one of my planning tool, because I had recommend mine, has been the aim of attaining gentleness. And I'm doing fine in that area. They are very fine. And I told the morning service, I don't need their accolades. I don't. I just need to know. I'm doing fine as far as being gentle. It's an important quality that I need in my life. And I don't do it for you. I do it for myself. So have a perspective. Find things in your life that you do not because of a pressure from anyone else. And do it for yourself. See things you need to overcome. Number three, what do you want to achieve? The soul should achieve certain things. And in our planning, we need to be very clear about things that we desire to achieve. And this achievement does not only refer to, to visible or tangible commodities of attainment the car, the house. It may also be the status that you need to do because majority of us think too low of the things that we can have by virtue of our status. So I want you to go higher in your thinking so that what you need to achieve at the first level is about status. The second level is about your behavioral posture. And then the third aspect is about material things. But we get so stuck in the lower version. What do you want to achieve in the year 2024? It's very important that we have a plan of becoming. Three important things in becoming. Who do I want to become? What do I have to overcome? What do I want to achieve? You plan for them. Second area, because my time is going too fast. Second area that we need to plan for in our six-year strategy, that will then roll up to the nine uh, year when we do assessment. Because here's what we want to do. In the year 2030, we want to measure. And I want you to be able to see yourself in a document. How you have been planning for one thing and not getting it done. So that you get frustrated with yourself and make changes that are necessary.
It's quiet here. It's quiet. So the social, the next area that we need to plan for in our six-year planning of six aspects is social wealth. God have located and planted within a year the abundance of resources that are located within the social structure of our being. And we need to plan on how we can get the wealth in the social wealth sphere. Now, social wealth sphere deals with the value that is embedded in people around you. The value that is embedded in people around you. And that value is normally expressed in three important ways. Number one, it is expressed in network, net worth, goodness of heart. Your social wealth is located within people around you who have what? Network, net worth, goodness of heart. How far you are going to go in life is going to be dependent upon people who surround you. And if you don't plan to have relationship with people who have better network, you may be stuck in one place. You also need in your life to have relationship with people who have better, or let me say it in the right way, who have a positive net worth. Because some of you relate with people who are always in debt. When you cry, you all cry. <laughs> what, what is your plan of reaching high net worth people? Because you need them. One of my mentors said to me, one of God's greatest blessing and God's channel of blessing is going to be people. If God wants to, in, to lift you up to do greater things in your life, here's one of the things that he's going to do. He's not going to send miracle money. He's going to send people in your life. But what if you scare them by how you talk? What if your nasty attitude pops out when you are having coffee? So we need to work in ourselves and have a strategy of how do we keep high net worth people. Not only that, how do we keep people with a good network of people? Because sometimes your prayer request is located within another person. As a matter of fact, breakthrough, which, what do you call breakthrough in pastor's language? It's all breakthroughs are located within people. The blessing of God, the opportunities are located through people. How do you deal with people? We have Christians with a nasty attitude. They pray to God, God sends the people, they send the people that are embedded with the opportunities that they need. What is your plan of, here's one of the sad moments in your life. One of the sad moments that can happen to anyone is meeting the right person and not seeing that this is the right person. I mean, you are a guy, you meet this girl, and you fail to recognize it's her. Or you are, a, you are a girl, and you meet the right guy, and he masqueraded in a format that you didn't anticipate, and you reject him. And you later recognize it was him, oh my goodness. I mean, he likes the things that I like. And you cry. Or you go to an interview to the employer that is the employer of your dreams and you don't show up to the employer as requested and you miss an opportunity. Or you come to the right church that you're supposed to meet with the right pastor that you're supposed to meet and your attitude stands before you and you miss an opportunity to be empowered towards your destiny. It's all in how do we relate to people. Network. Who, is, who are the five most influential people in your life? Count them. How's their financial situation? How's their relationship with their wives or husband? Where do they work? How's their performance rate? Uh, how's their relationship with their parents and family? And uh, what is their level of influence in the society? Because that's where you see them, where, that's where you're going. Maxwell says, our success is as far as the closest people in our lives. Here's what the scripture says. Proverbs chapter number 15, verse number 22 says, with multiple, with multiple cancer, plans succeed. And I've taught you that the book of Proverbs is read 
with an invest. So without counsel, many plans, without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. It's the same story. So, so here's what it says. In your life, you need people of value. And here's our people of value comes. They come with their network. Somebody who can help you meet the person you are praying to meet. Sometimes we call them destiny helpers. You suddenly meet the person who becomes an answer to everything that you need. Do you remember how you felt when you met your wife or your husband? You felt like this guy, the other guys, it's just that you thought it is in the wife and, and husband area. It can appear in the financial, appear in the social, appear in the open doors, appear in the business. There are people that when you meet, they become answers. You thank God for them. So as we pray this year, this is how we are praying, Lord, lead me to the right people so that you don't relate with people who are always taking and borrowing from you. If the net worth of your friends is always based on your positive performance of your assets and you are the one who is always lending, you need better friends. Uh, guys, I have a project, there's an opportunity, what can we do? And you need a friend to say, oh, okay, is, have you taken care of this risk? Yes, of this one. Okay, now I can give you the money. Not, let's pray about it. <laughs> As a pastor, I'm also praying for a church. You tell them, we need more air cons here. They don't say, in the week of prayer, pastor, let's believe God. Let's pray harder. No. I want people to be able to say, okay, pastor, how much are they con costing? Where do we buy them? You need people. And you need to plan on how to meet them. You need to plan. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about a lady called Ruth. He went into the fields. He had to play the game to be seen. And later on today we talk about her story as the grandmother of the Lord Jesus Christ. How? He learned the strategy of being at the right place. He didn't pray about it. And here's what happened. He got an advice from a person who said, no, here's what you need to do. Go and stay in that field. Whatever happened, happen, stay. If we advise some of you today, stay. First day you go. When you come there, you are angry. They are not giving me anything because they couldn't give me. Actually, the other workers rejected her until she met the owner, Boaz. How are you planning to meet people you need in your life? It should not just be, Lord, I pray, lead me to the people. How do you intentionally plan to be found at the right place? I have a tendency of going to have coffee. It's a very important tendency. So I've changed one of the hotels that I've been doing coffee at because I think people are moving. There's a new hotel in the CBD uh, called 430. Uh, if I'm promoting it, they, they'll get a clip. It's okay. Yeah. Be in a place where you can meet people. And sometimes better people if there's that weight. House, home, you miss even church. Yeah. <laughs> and you want us to pray. For your wealth, for your business partner, for your wife, for your husband. So in our drive, all of us need to have a plan. How do I increase my network, relationship with people who matter? You know, sometimes you can... You can have a bad, bad experience of relating with people with bad heart. Black heart. But there's a good blessing when you get to relate with people with goodness of heart. Here's the explanation of goodness of, of heart. It, uh, these are people who have the capacity to withstand your mistakes and your areas of growth. People who you like to be advised by them. Even when they talk about your weaknesses and your mistake, you don't feel demeaned. You, you don't feel like you are being condemned. They can give you feedback without taking your dignity away. Have you ever met somebody who is telling the truth, but how he's telling the truth doesn't add fuel to your change? When you meet people with goodness of heart, they are able to drive you towards the change that you have to go to without making you feel inferior. You need the blessing of good people. 
They welcome you into their house. They teach you things that you don't know. They take you places that you don't know. One of the greatest blessings in my life, which also helps me to be where I am, is that I met a man some years ago, I think that was 2005, and he has helped me to understand a lot of things, to learn to say thank you. And, and he didn't teach it to me, because as a white person, I think with the wife, I was always there. Thank you, thank you. And these people, they don't, don't they become tired of saying thank you? Thank you, welcome. Nagana, we come from thank you, thank you. <laughs> there are things that you can learn when you are among good people. Don't restrict yourself to primary school friends that you had and they were always behind you at school. Some of you like dominance. You need to be among friends that you can keep quiet, learn. You are not the most vocal and the most knowledgeable. You need to learn. Have different groups where you learn. That's how God is going to bless. So be intentional because the blessing of God is located among people. There are families that like to close themselves in the house. And guess what happens? They fight. And no one goes out. Mental health up. Depression up. How about you? And they come to the pastor. Now it's, it's gone. Have people in your life. This is one of the highest plenty of success. People that can make you better. Pray that the Lord leads you to those people. It's important. Because when we do that, we are allowing the grace of God to manifest in the areas of our lives where we do not know how to deal with things. Every man, every man, and all of us is a product of people. But if you are a product of bad people, you can get it from your toe. You are unaware of your toe. You can get it from how you speak. You are on our way. It's a black spot. In our planning to make 2024, here's my greatest prayer. Lord, I pray that you lead me to people who would make me better. <laughs> Those that I make better, Lord, ah, Lord, let answer their prayers. My prayer is that, Lord, lead me to people who would make me better. Let their network make me better. Let their net worth, make me better. Let their goodness of heart challenge me to become a better person. I'm praying for those people. And if you are the one I'm praying for you, I want to be connected with you. If you are not, uh, the Lord will answer your prayer and lead you to another person. And here are the six people that I want all of you to recognize. With multiple plans, uh, 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 cancel the plans, prosper. Six people, because I thought, how do I make this practical? Because there are certain people that you need in your life. Number one, you need to have a pastor in your life. A good pastor is a treasure. The scripture calls a pastor the, 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 the shepherd of your soul. There is something that happens to you because they are in your life you would need spiritual guidance. And when you, you pray, you need the Lord to direct you. Lord, lead me to the pastor who can help me to become better. Lead me to the pastor who would not exploit me. Lead me to the pastor whose teachings, prayers would make me better. Because life is going to push you into positions where you need a pastor. Pray. Because you need him. Number two. For those of you who are single especially. Please those of you who are married you are excluded. Pray for the right husband. And the right wife. You know getting into the hands of a. Wrong dirty pastor can destroy your life. It's like falling into the hands of a bad woman or a bad husband. Can destroy you, change your life. And he said, this is not me. Because the person you have brought into your life has changed you negatively. Pray that the Lord leads you and have a plan of finding things in us 
pastors, you don't want, that I know in the scripture, move away. But Lord, direct me. The pastor can lead me. Direct me to a wife, a husband, who can make me better. Stop judging people based on net worth only. Goodness of heart. Number three. Pray that the Lord lead you to a financial advisor. You need somebody who knows something about money better than you. Find a friend who is an accountant, who is a, who knows, at least somebody who knows something in the field of money. Because you like it. How many of you like money? So you need somebody who can help you deal with areas of money better. And that might be the answer to the prayer that you have been praying for years. The answer is getting an accountant who looks at your books, who looks at your company, who looks at your earnings and delivers you from higher consumption and spontaneous spending. And your problems are solved. Pray that you have somebody in your life who knows how money is spent, it's used, it's invested. Number something, pray for a lawyer. You need a gift from God of a good lawyer. And I said it in the morning, where I stand today, I, I recommend, as for me, I don't go to lawyers I don't have personal relationship with. I can't go to a lawyer and then I'm told, call the office. And then instead of talking to the lawyer, what the secretary? And I can tell you, your life can be at risk where your solution is in the answer of a good lawyer. So when you find lawyers, even when you don't have friends and so forth, befriend them. Treat them well. Actually, given the life, your life, the, 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 the propensity and the probability of your default in life, Look for a professional you need. Maybe a lawyer, maybe a doctor. When you find a, a, a doctor, befriend them. They may come to the room when your, your operation is being done and tell the other one, no, you are aiding too much. <laughs> and you get saved. Or no, don't operate first. Let's refer him. You need the blessing of professionals in your life. When you see them, don't despise them. The Bible says, do not despise the rich. My dear. Yeah. Because you can't get what you despise. Number something. Businessmen. Relate with people who have multiple income streams. So that when you have needs and you think about praying, they help you to think about creating an alternative income stream. Pray for a friend with good heart. A friend who can understand you without judging you. A friend who can give you objective feedback. You, my friend, you talk too much. You, my friend, rather mad. You, my friend, you have a nasty attitude. Can you work on this? It's a gift. Without this gift of people in your life, without you recognizing them and intentionally keeping them and finding a way of making life with them that, your life may not be a bad experience because of the devil. It is out of ignorance. Here's what the scripture says. My people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. We need to plan for these things. And when we have in their lives, in our lives, we know who to keep. We know who to keep at a distance. We know who to listen to. Some of you listen to everyone. Let's stand. I want you to lift up your hands. This is a prayer level. And our prayer level is not God do it, it's God lead me. Just whisper to God to guide you to your plan. Father, we are before your presence. Help us as we plan for our souls, as we plan for people around our lives to see people of value, to see good people that you bring in our lives, that we may honor them, that we may keep them. Lord, help us this morning as we stand as a congregation. Help each and every one of us to find people that are relevant to us. 
in network and connections, in finances and net worth, in the goodness of heart that we need in our lives. We surrender our lives to you. Help us to find people in our lives. People that can help us to become better. That we may be who you want us to be. In Jesus' name. And this morning if you are here, you don't have a person in your life called Jesus. The scripture calls him the friend who sticks closer than any other friend. He'll be there when I'm not there. You know we are getting into a week of prayer and I'm encouraging all of you to come tomorrow and pray. Because as a pastor I don't want to lie to you. This week I'm praying for myself more than I pray for anyone else. And I'm encouraging you with objective truth. Don't trust anyone a lot to pray for you. Come and bring your own issues before the Lord. But before you come to him, if you are here this morning, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You have never accepted him as a savior. It's a new year. You can become a new creation in him and give your life to Jesus. So if that's you this morning, you are here, you are saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just flip up your hand. I want to pray with you. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands. Yes. Do I see? Yeah. Any other? You want to give your life to Jesus? You want to give your life to Jesus? Any other? Yeah. As we see, as we see in that song, I'm going to ask you to come so we pray with you. Let's give them a big hand as they do. Jesus is going to transform your life from the inside. Nothing physical is going to change. But when you live here, there's going to be more joy in your soul. It's going to be more peace in your soul. The Spirit of God is going to descend, come into your heart, transform you, and make you a brand new person. And here's what I can tell you. All of us who are here did what you're about to do. You called on Jesus. He came into your heart slowly but surely. People said to us, you'd never be transformed. And Jesus transformed us. Lift up your hands and pray this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I come before you. Lord Jesus, today I invite you. Come into my heart. Come and be the Lord of my heart and my soul. Come and help me to grow to become what you want me to be. You devil, today I break my relationship with you. I'm a child of God. I'm saved by the blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray for this lady this morning that let there be grace upon her life. I pray that may your spirit do work that none of us can do in her life. Let peace be a portion. Let hope be a portion. Let joy be a portion. May the Spirit of the Lord break every darkness and every obstacle in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be peace and grace over your life. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a lady here. She would become your friend. Do you have some things there? Yes, just go and pick them first. Come on, let's give her a hand. So let's meet tomorrow. Take time at whatever level of intensive fasting you want to do. But I'm encouraging you, pray for yourself. They are your demons, whether they are Mwato or Kalanga or whatsoever, that are following you. This time, each person fights their own. Yeah. Find time to pray for yourself that the Lord may direct your steps. Thank you for coming. Let's see you tomorrow. God bless you.